Let's look at this issue where I can't add items just willy-nilly to my array. When we instantiate the array, the array has a fixed size. I'm trying to add items to it later. Uh, it, it's not allowed. Okay, in fact, let's just say at our party, Grandpa showed up late. Grandpa wanted to be part of the part of the party, so we'll say ages sub five gets 99. Grandpa's ticking and he's kicking. Let me just show you the indexes again for all the items in our array. This is index zero, index one, index two, index three. And index 4, but there's not an index 5. We're trying to go out of bounds here. So when I F5 on F5 on this, we get an index out of range exception. You can't do that. That's bad. So anyway, hopefully you get the idea there. I think we're done with adding up everybody's age. Let me get rid of that and just bring format this a little bit. Bring this up here. This is the illegal line. We want to make it legal. So if we want to add an extra element to our array, we actually have to instantiate another array. And why we have to do this is a little bit historical. It has to do with memory management and garbage collector and heap management. I don't want to get into all the details, but let me draw our original array here that contains all of our items. Let's say this is the heap. And chances are there's other things on the heap, and there's a good chance that we instantiated another object, and that object ended up out here. Let's say it's a cow object, and we put Betsy out here. If C sharp allowed us to just shove Grandpa out here, well, element 5 would go into Betsy's space right there. And so when we say 99 here, we just lost some of Betsy's data. We've just stomped on her memory, is what we call that in unmanaged languages. But, but Obviously, this is not ideal. We want to avoid this, and .NET will not allow you to do it unless you get into some unsafe uh, pointers and things like that, but we're going to totally ignore that right here. So to get Grandpa into the party without stomping on Betsy, what we have to do is instantiate a brand new array. And if you use the list data structure, these lists do this automatically for you, um, but lists also use arrays, and arrays are fixed size. So let's make a new array. What we'll do is instantiate a new array. It will go into a different part of our heap memory. When we instantiate the array, all the values will default to zero. I won't draw those in here, but what we'll have to do is copy each one of these items down one by one. So 25, 27, 23, 34, 36. And with five elements, with our computers, it's probably not that expensive, but if you're storing large amounts of data, I mean, this is, this is overhead. Okay, making a new array, letting go of our old array so the garbage collector can come in and chomp it up for us. And then the garbage collector has to rearrange the heap and compact the heap, defragment the heap, that sort of thing. And then the copying takes time, instantiating the new array takes time. But then finally we made room for Grandpa, and he's happy he can be at our party. Let's actually do this code. I'm going to say int array temp gets new int array. It's going to be ages.length plus one, plus one for grandpa, four tab tab i, i is less than ages dot length, hit enter, temp sub i gets ages sub i, I'm actually going to remove these curly braces just to tighten things up here, this loop will copy each element down for us one by one, so there's some cost associated with that. Now we have this last element here, but instead of using the temp variable to store that in, what I want to do is take ages and say, ages, you're no longer pointing to this one. Instead, ages, we're going to point you or have you reference our new array, and then we'll put grandpa in at the end. So ages gets temp, and now this old array right here is up for garbage collection. And then I can say, age is sub 5, let's bring you on in, Grandpa, and everything will be just fine. I'm going to hit F5, the program runs without crashing. <sighs> there you go. Now we can actually use some built-in functions to do this. We don't have to write this code ourselves over and over again. I guess we could put it in our own, our own functions, our own methods. Sorry, I keep swapping functions and methods, that's what I get for working on C++ and C Sharp at the same time. Same idea. Uh, there are some built-in functions that'll do exactly this. We've instantiated our new array. I can just say, hey, array.copy. And the source array is ages. The target array is temp. 
and then the length will be ages dot length like so that does exactly what this loops doing down here so we can use the built-in copy function but then we still have to say ages gets temp and then ages sub 5 gets 99 there's also actually let me just run this show you that everything works fine it doesn't blow up on us we can also say uh, array dot resize okay, it's a generic function but we'll just pass in our int arrays here notice it's a by reference argument it's a reference to our array reference so that this resize function can do this magic here where it's going to take our reference to our old array and have it reference the new array that it creates so arrays.resize essentially instantiates a new array does the copy for us does the reassignment for us so we can actually pack all this into a resize and say hey we need to resize ages to six elements so that we can get grandpa in there and even though this is more succinct oh i have to pass by ref here ref even though this is more succinct it still has all that same overhead we have to instantiate a new array we have to copy the items the old array is up for uh, garbage collection but it still allows grandpa to get in there <sighs> not ideal and then what if grandma shows up <laughs> if grandma shows up you know maybe grand grandma's got a few years on grandpa if grandma shows up, we have to go through this all again, right? Or, or we could just be smart and say, hey, chances are grandma will also show up, so let's add two more slots to the end of our array, that sort of thing. Well, this could turn into a headache. And then we have to figure out, well, which slots are taken and which slots aren't. And a list, a list just manages all this for us. But we're not quite to lists. I still want to look at arrays, look at rectangular arrays versus jagged arrays. What's the difference? and that sort of thing but hopefully getting an idea that arrays are not flexible they are extremely fast because all the data is contiguous okay, and by contiguous I mean this 25 will take up a location in RAM it will take up one two three four bytes and then I am guaranteed right after those four bytes to have the next value which is 27 that'll take up the next one two three four bytes and then I'm guaranteed to have the 23 take up the next four bytes so on and so forth so that makes arrays very fast to index into because I can just say, okay, I know you're all in a line, just like my kids when I'm at the store. I say, get in line behind me so I can see all of you and make sure you're all there, that sort of thing. I live in Utah. I have a ton of kids. If they're not in line, then I, I, I might miss one. I might leave one at the store. So anyway, the access here is a lot faster because the data is contiguous.